Rub up your engines! Juan Juan says, how do I check my automatic transmission fluid level? I got a 2020 Kia Optima, 2.4. How do I check it? Does the car have to be on or off? Thanks. They don't put dipsticks on the modern ones. You can't check it. You need a mechanic to check it. We use special computers. We got to get them to operating specs and then run some tests. It's a real pain in the butt. They just do it to be swine so you take your car back to the dealer. But it's a 2020 Kia Optima, so it's only two years old, right? I'm assuming they built the car right and had the fluid in. It works okay. Obviously, they did. Get the car up and crawl under. Look at the transmission bottom. If it's all clean and dry, it's not leaking and it's full. Because if you lost fluid, it's going to be leaking out of the shafts or the seals, and you'll see it all oily and drippy. If it's clean, whistle clean, don't worry about it. But you can't check them yourself anymore because the swines have gotten rid of the dipstick. Just plain stupidity, but that's the way they've all gone, so they can rip you off and make you go to the dealer to get your car worked on because you can't even check the fluid level. On some BMWs and Mercedes, they even took the oil dipstick out, and that's done by computer, which is really stupid, but most of them, especially the Mercedes, they went back to putting dipsticks in because their owners all screamed, I don't even know, I check the oil in my car, what kind of crap is this, I paid a hundred grand for a car, and they went back to putting the dipsticks back in, so, but I doubt if they're ever going to put them back on the trannies because it's a big money maker for all the manufacturers when they service the cars. Ready, 0115 says, my vehicle stalls. I got a 2012 Toyota Sequoia with 90,000 miles. I did a new alternator and battery replace. For some reason, it died on me while driving twice when I'm slowing down. What could cause it? Generally, the Sequoias can run forever. You had the alternator and battery replaced. Here's the thing. When you disconnect the battery and replace it, it's got to reset the idle. And if you don't, it may conk out. But try this. Just drive it for a week. Hopefully, it doesn't conk out much. And if it stops conking out, the computer's just resetting the idle. I mean, I've got equipment. I'm a high-tech mechanic. Fancy equipment that I can reset the idle on it by using my fancy equipment to reset the idle speed. But just normally driving it. If you do it next time you change the battery, here's what you can easily do. What you do is you go and you start the car and you sit in the driver with your foot on the gas and you have it going about 2,000 RPM in park for about four minutes, right? Then let it idle for two minutes. Then turn the AC on. Go to 1,500 for a few minutes. Then let it idle for a few minutes. And then driving around, it probably won't stall out anymore. That's kind of a fast way you can reset it. But normally driving over time, they should reset themselves. Nick Penn says, my car kicks when I decelerate. I bought a Hyundai Tucson. When I decelerate, it kicks. The dealer replaced the fuel pump and cleaned the math sensor, but it still does. It helps. When you decelerate, you accelerate it and you're driving, you got your foot on the gas, you could easily hit a bad throttle position sensor. Because when you let go of the gas and decelerate, the throttle position sensor is supposed to smoothly turn down to say that, oh, you're decelerating. If there's something wrong and it gives bad data when you decelerate, it can jerk because it might give it gas. Take back, give it because it's not saying it's going down smoothly. It might like jerk. It might actually go up with value and down a little as it goes down if the throttle position sensor is breaking down inside. So I'd say start with a throttle position sensor. I've had that fix many cars. I wouldn't buy a Hyundai, but as you say, you regret the decision, but you own it. So you might as well take care of it. Try a throttle position sensor. That will often fix it. All right, old Elon Musk and Tesla. Well, he said Tesla might have to get into the lithium mining business because the costs are getting so insane in the prices. Maybe the nickel mining business too. He just keeps charging more for his cars, right? Don't think that the people are supplying him with raw materials aren't going to start charging him more. Well, he's charged more. We'll charge more too. So he's going to have to control more. Now, there's no shortage of lithium on the earth. There's a lot of it. But the process to refine it and get it out is pretty slow and it's expensive. And in the last year, the price of lithium has gone up 480%. Everybody said, oh, well, you know, as time goes on, they'll perfect the batteries. They'll be better and cheaper. No, they're getting more expensive. They use lithium because it's one of the least dense materials out there. It's lightweight, so the batteries won't be as heavy. They're still heavy, but they'd be a lot heavier if you're using lead-acid batteries. Now, in 2020, Tesla got rights to mine lithium in Nevada. They had to deal with another company, but it fell through. So, who knows? Old Elon might get in the mining business sometime soon. He's got enough money. Maybe he can shell some of it out to make things more efficient and not just say, I'm the richest man in the world, blah, blah, blah. Put some of that money to work now instead of just sitting on his laurel. If they're going to produce mass amount of electric cars, they're going to have to make sure their supply is there and that they can 
control it, not, hey, he's raising his prices, we'll charge him more for the raw materials. Reality, probably not going to be that big for the majority of people for quite some time, and who knows which way the chips will fall. Ghostbiker001 says, hey, I bought a Subaru Impreza hatchback with a 1.5 liter engine, took it for a spin. Check engine light came on, my scan tool said cylinder number four. What could it be? There are actually dozens of things that can cause a misfire, but you start with the basics things. Change all four spark plugs because they work together. You can't have one new one and three old. If it goes away, that's it. You had a bad spark plug. Now, if it still has misfire cylinder number four, then take the number four coil on plug assembly that the spark plug is plugged into. Take it off, put it on number one, and put number one coil on number four. They're the same, you can switch them. Drive it. Then if the misfire number one comes up instead of four, you'll know you changed the coil, and so it's a bad coil. Very simple. Now, if it's not that, it can be a fuel injector, it can be a blowing head gas, it can be all kinds of things. Normally, it's just a spark plug or ignition coil assembly, I know. So now you know how to test it. Easy to do yourself, and you can fix it yourself too. Well, the Vietnamese are on their way to the United States. The company VinFast is filing for a US IPO, initial public offering, and they expect to raise billions so that they can sell and make electric cars to sell in the United States. Now, VinFast didn't start making cars until 2019, so they're working pretty fast there. Now, there's already the VinFast VF E35 and E36 that are electric vehicles that they sell, pull in the United States market, and open up a factory and build them here too. They say that the fancy one will have a range of 300 miles. So, the Vietnamese are coming to the United States, only this time, they are creating an IPO. Kind of interesting, you know what I mean? Vietnam's supposed to be a communist country, but you know, they're coming over here, they want to make an IPO to get billions of dollars. Kind of makes you wonder that the word communism really doesn't mean much anymore. Maybe capitalist dictatorship, but communism, not really. If they're doing an IPO, an initial public offering for stock in the United States, <laughs> the world's kind of upside down, topsy turvy. Well, I couldn't help but laugh at this one. Turns out that that the Ukrainians are turning some of their drones to look like those Skynet drones from Terminator to scare the Russians away. They're making them look like the big electric robot monsters with uh, Gatling gun machine guns in each hand. You know? So they say the Ukrainians were using these drones to chase Russian troops away. We well, can imagine if these guys look up and these drones would look like something from Terminator. Now the problem is now the cat's out of the bag and they know they were fake, right? They said they couldn't shoot or do anything. Now, if they actually made them so they shot a few rounds out, that would scare the heck out of them, they'd run away. But the, the Russians aren't stupid. Eventually, they'd say, look, here come these drones with these fake machine guns, but they're not firing at us, so you don't have to worry about that. They should actually make a few that actually shoot out. And in that case, they'd have the guy screaming bloody murder, because everybody watches the Terminator movies. And if the Russians saw these actual drones coming at them, firing at them, I'm sure they'd be headed for the hills. Now, of course, the Ukrainians are using actual armed drones got a bunch of them dirty. But they shouldn't have let the cat out of the bag. They shouldn't have told anybody. That'd be even scarier. They think they're real. Now they're going to like, hey, that stuff's fake. Or make a few of them that do shoot out, and then they would really scare the heck out of them. Check it out. There's a hydrogen fuel cell boat, the fuel cell system comes from Toyota, that's a hydro foil that goes up in the air, and it can go like 57 miles an hour on the water with just electric. It's called the Chase Zero. It's a 32.8 feet or 10 meter long boat, and it can carry six crew members, and it has 80 kilowatt Toyota fuel cells in it. But the interesting thing is, you know, they take hydrogen, the hydrogen goes to the fuel cell, creates electricity to drive the electric motors, and then the only waste thing is a little bit of heat, and water comes out the back of now, the way that this one can go so fast is it also has a big old battery pack because there's kind of a lag sometimes with fuel cells making electricity, so the batteries can boost it, and that's how it can go 57.5 miles an hour on the water, which is pretty fast for a boat of that size because it's a hydrofoil. It goes up on the foils when it starts going fast. Now, it would fly because it generates 550 horsepower of electric power when the fuel cell and the batteries are thrown out full speed, and it's a 400 volt. DC system. You better hope it's sealed well so the water doesn't electrocute you where you're driving it. <laughs> now, of course, this is a prototype. They're playing around with it. It would be extremely expensive if you wanted to buy one today. But they want to test it all out for boating, see how it works, and of course, then go for a global marine for bigger ones or giant ships to see how it operates with that. But that'd be a fun toy if you get your hands on one. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, Remember to ring that bell.